Hi everyone, welcome to Hot Seat with Cognizant Clay. I am your host, Clayton Terrio. Today on the show we have Paul on. Paul is diagnosed with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. He is going to school for business fundamentals with a focus in human resources, and he is also a motivational speaker. Hope you guys enjoy it. I'm gonna hit record here. That voice creeps me out every time. Yeah, it's like a horror movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. Yeah. Well, first of all, thanks for doing this, man. I appreciate it. I'm glad we uh, connected. Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Um, how are you doing with all this quarantine right now? Yeah, I know what you mean, because it's like, I, I don't go out that much, but I think once we're, you know, stuck, you you miss it, because it's it's hard to adapt. Yeah, it is, man. It's just like, you know, like, before, like, you know, I wouldn't go out too much, because, you know, my health and all. But now, yeah. You know, you kind of want to go out more, like, I, I would rather go out, you know, like, knowing that, you know, you know I have the freedom to go out whenever. And like you know, even if I was maybe Asia, I'd rather go out. You know, I think freedom is more. You know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, so for my guests who don't know, we connected because we both have Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and yeah. you know, it's 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 really good to find people who have the same condition. Can can you just talk me through a little bit of the the challenges involved with living with Duchenne's? is that like you know my muscles deteriorate over time and you know like things I could do like two weeks ago you know I couldn't I can't do it now and you know so that's like the the most frustrating thing but I think you know it it kind of teaches you about life though that you know that nothing is like gonna be the same you know you have to adapt to like different changes and I think that's the very you know difficult part because I think I'm sure you know. Like before, you know, we were more able physically, and now you know we're less able. And so I think that's the most difficult part. Yeah, and I think I think I watched your video on YouTube about about growing up with it, and and it's it really related to me because you know you're you're slower than your friends, and it's it's really hard to kind of learn that that's how life's going to be, and I, I think yeah. it's the adapting to it is, is very difficult. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and so how did you overcome these challenges? You know, I think it's just with my, the help of my friends and family, like, you know, my family members, even though I had a disability, they didn't treat me like that. You know, they believed in me and all that. And I also had like mentors that like, you know, talk, talked it through, you know, like, I felt like I was alone, and so, you know, I had people that would listen to how I would feel, and so I think that really helped, and I think, though, looking back, though, like, I, I see, like, the power of social media, because back then, if I knew that other people had Duchenne, you know, I don't think I would be so depressed, because I know a lot more people are going through the same thing, you know. Yeah, and I think, I think that's why I'm doing this, too, is, is, you know, I've interviewed people with all different disabilities and it's like, you know, maybe somebody will see that interview and realize, okay, I'm not, it's not so bad. Like it, it's, you know, it's obviously nothing you would choose, but at the same yeah. time, you got to learn to deal with it. Yeah, definitely. It's just, but it's good that we have like a community now, you know? For sure. Um, who, who inspired you most to stay positive and stay motivated? everyone you know like I see people you know like you know they don't have physical disabilities but they have other hardships and I saw like how so them they had to go through a lot of hard things yet they always remain positive and so that kind of translated to me you know like you know they can be happy in their hard situation so why not me you know yeah I was having a th that relates a lot yesterday I, I did an interview for a different blog for a guy named his thing is called tea with mike and he just has conversations with people and i was saying how you know whether you're able-bodied or disabled there's always something that 
people are going through that you can relate and you can have that empathy to, you know, feel better about yourself and being able to help others as well. Right. Yeah. And so you are in business administration, correct? Yeah, I am. Just actually, I'm taking my like last class starting tomorrow. Oh, wow. Awesome. Um, t- talk me through why why you chose business administration. You know, it's just like, I like, you know, just, I just thought of like, at first I was thinking of doing like a communications major, but I, I realized that business, you know, you do a lot of communicating right there, you know, you do a lot of presentations. And I'm also very interested in like the business area of it. So that's why I, I chose uh business because it combined you know what i want to learn about like starting a business and combined you know the communications part of it and so that's why i chose that yeah and why what do you hope to do with it you know i I hope like one day i could start like my own business yeah so i think that's the goal i want to be you know kind of want to be like entrepreneur yeah yeah yeah, and so so you also focus on on HR and and what like what do you think disabled people can contribute to HR departments? No, I think they could contribute a lot because you know they could learn how to uh, you know include everyone, and I think we could provide like a great insight on how to do that, and so I think it's very important because. I think once they see our perspective, I think it just means that they'll be more uh, inclusive. You know, I'm pretty sure like there's some g- great like companies, you know, that have like great HR, but I don't think it would have been possible if they didn't care about diversity, you know, or including people with disabilities, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and that was another interview a few weeks ago was Jack McCormick. He works at the hospital here in Oakville, Ontario. And he's blind and he works in HR and he, he said it, it really helps to, to have that perspective of the disabled community because no one really thinks about it. And it's, it is kind of sad how it, a lot of disabled people are thrown on the back burner. Yeah, I think that's a yeah, little bit hard right there because, you know, it's just, I think people also kind of feel like, we won't be able to succeed because, you know, they're worried that how we would fit in. But I think for me, though, I think people with disabilities, I think they are better fitted to adjust because, you know, we had to adjust, you know, our lives. And so how much more, you know, adjusting to a job. Exactly. And and the other thing I wanted to, to touch on was you, you are, you are a motivational speaker and that's, a big part of what you do. do. Do you remember like the moment you knew you wanted to do motivational speaking? Mm, it's actually very interesting how, how that happened because like I was very afraid of speaking and then uh, I took this uh, communications class in high school and then from there I realized I could speak you know like I did have the confidence and then and so from there like I did I took some speech classes in, in college, and so I learned you know, how to speak. And then w- one time, one guy, uh, one professor, he actually changed like what I thought. He, he told me that uh, he could see me as a motivational speaker. And then from there, I, I realized, you know, maybe you know there is like a you know potential in doing that. And then I realized that you know I really like speaking now because you know I give. I have like the opportunity uh, to empower others, not just people with disabilities, but people without, you know, that no matter what you go through, you can overcome, overcome it. And so I think that's what gave me the interest in uh, speaking. Yeah. And what, what's your favorite part about motivational speaking? You know, I think my favorite part is relating to the people, you know, I think that's my, they were part like connecting and all that. I think that's the most important because like, you know, I could, you know, speak all I want. And then if there is no impact, you know, it wouldn't be as fun, you know, so 
I think it has to be the people. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think a lot of the, a lot of the people I follow on Instagram are motivational speakers and it, it just, it kind of just gives you that motivation too. Like it's, it's always positive. And, and I think as long as you're, you're positive, you're, you're going to make an impact and people are going to listen yeah. for sure. Yeah. That's very important. Yeah, so I have a little segment here called Rapid Fire that I do with my guests just to ask a few uh, random questions. So you were born in Mississippi, but you grew up predominantly in actually Canada and L.A. So this is a two-parter. Who would be your favorite Canadian? Mm, That's tough. I got to say. I think I gotta go with the weekend. You know, the, yeah. Yeah, I can, yeah, I think he's my favorite. So. Yeah, that's a good one. He's a good singer. I, I, I like that pick. And the second part, who is your favorite person from California? Hmm. I guess it's not really a favorite person, but a band. I think the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. Yeah, that's gotta be it. You know? There's another. There's another iconic. Uh, I, I like them. I've, I've liked them since I was little. So. I like your pick. Um, what's your favorite thing to eat? Hmm, my favorite thing to eat. Hmm. I, I gotta say anything like pasta related. So it could be like a fettuccine or something like that. You know? That's a very common pick. And my top two picks have been pasta and Mexican food. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I think you covered this, but maybe give me another one. Who is your favorite band or musician? Okay. Favorite band or musician? You can do one of each if you want. Doesn't matter. Yeah, okay, let me think. I think musician. I like Ed Sheeran. Yeah. And then the band. Yeah. Hmm. It's a lot of choices, but. I think the Arctic Monkeys, that could be one of my favorite bands. There's another, there's another double answer. I'm surprised Uh, Steve Dangle, he's a Leafs blogger. He said Arctic Monkeys, one of their albums. He couldn't remember the name of the album, but he said that they were his favorite when he was younger. And if you could be anyone living or dead for 24 hours, who would you be? I like that. I like that. I was Presley. Um, so just getting back into the questions here a little bit, I, I was, uh, I was just wondering what, what charities or advocacy groups do, are you involved in or do you support? You know, I gotta say, like, I like the Make-A-Wish Foundation, you know, like, I think they just do a wonderful job in like, you know, providing people like a little bit of hope, you know? Because, you know, I think it really helps, you know, when people, you know, people get to experience like a joy of, you know, you know, what they get, you know, so that they go on trips and then seeing the smile on the kids' faces is pretty, it's pretty touching. You know? Have you ever, have you ever done a Make-A-Wish trip when you were younger? Uh, no, I didn't. Like, I actually didn't, I didn't really know about it. Yeah, I think it, it, it. Like you say, I think going back to the social media, I think now that social media is a big thing, it it really, the word gets out there. I went on one when I was 13. I went to Arizona and it was just so much fun to experience the culture and, and the, I met the Coyotes hockey team. So that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, And, and also going back to muscular dystrophy a little bit, what advice would you give to a person or a family member that's just recently got a diagnosis? Mm, Yeah. I think, I guess it's hard to give advice because, you know, a lot of people are going through like grief at that time, but I think that, you know, it's not the end. That muscular dystrophy is, is not like a death sentence or anything. It could actually be a new chance at life. And so I think the advice would be to, uh, yeah, it may be hard now, but 
uh, in the end, you know, everything will work out for the better. I, I already believe that. Yeah, and I think I think that's one thing I've I've learned is is like you say when we were younger it was really hard, but as you get older and you get more mature, you realize that you know what it's it's not the best hand to be dealt, but at the same time there is things you can do, and and my main one is focus on what you can do, not what you can't do. Yeah, I think that's perfect right there because you know for me like. Like when I was going to college, I was thinking of getting like a full-time job, but like now that my health is a certain way, like I know my uh, my limits, and so you know I've learned to manage my expectations a little, a little more, and you know that that really helped too. Yeah, and I I think that that's a good. Thanks for sharing that because I think a lot of people can get something from that. Is you know what health comes first and it may not be the greatest to not be able to have a full-time job, but at the same time, being happy is better than being rich. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That, it's making the most out of what you have. I think that's the most important thing. A hundred percent. And, and during this time, I just want to get your opinion on this is, is obviously with the, the lockdowns and the quarantine going on, it's, yeah. it's hard for people to, you don't get that word out about the disabled community, but how do you feel people should keep raising the awareness for our community during this time? You know, I think, I think it's kind of like an interesting time because I think, you know, it's not only people with like physical disabilities that are suffering, but also people, those with invisible disabilities. And because, you know, a lot of people, you know, they could be depressed even more. And, you know, I think a depression can be just as much of a disability as, you know, a physical disability. So I think what we need to help people can learn is that, yeah, we need to take care of those that are, you know, they may not be as physically able, but at the same time, we also have to take care of those that have invisible disabilities by, you know, making it a little bit easier on them, you know, just, you know, make giving them like a environment to relax. So I think that's important. Like we have to make a make it safe for people with all sorts of disabilities. And I think that's my uh, I think that's the most important takeaway from you know COVID nineteen and all this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And th- again, thanks for that because it's. It, I think you know a lot of people like we were saying earlier. It's like you a lot of people who are introverts are missing going out because you you kind of with something like this you kind of realize what you know what the rights you do have when life is quote unquote normal and i think i think it really has put a lot of people's problems into perspective and it, it is hard to keep going but that's why i'm doing this blog is because you know, if it wasn't for COVID, I may not have started it right now. I was a little bit skeptical to get it going, but once I did, it was, it, it's been really worth it for sure. Yeah, that's great, man. And uh, what are you doing other than school? What are you doing to keep busy? So for me, what I've been doing is just, I've been like learning a little bit about, like a little bit of graphic design. One of my, uh, my passion is to learn like, how to do Illustrator, all those Photoshop. And so I've been working on that. And also, also uh, I've been uh, working on like trying to get a podcast started. So I think that's what I'm going to be working on uh, throughout this time even more. Oh, awesome. Yeah, those are all good things. I'd, uh, I'd be interested in being on your podcast if you start it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it would be, that would be fun, you know. <laughs> I think that would be that would be really cool. Or is there any like, obviously with all this going on, have you done any like online motivational speaking, or is that pretty much at a standstill right now? Uh, I think for me right now, it's just I'm just focusing on like uh, school because you know like speaking is a lot of you know it takes a lot of preparation. Yeah. So so I think once I'm done with my summer classes, I think I will. Like, you know, fully devote myself to that. And I also think, you know, starting a podcast 
that is good practice for speaking as well. Yeah, and it's definitely it's it's a lot of practice for like you say, even even graphic design, like you can design a logo for it and like you know what I mean? You can kind of apply all different mediums and like skills towards it. Yeah. For sure. And and I think that's that's pretty cool. I, I wish you all the best with the podcast and uh, your schooling for sure. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Well, that's about all I have for you, Paul. Thanks again for doing this uh, and helping me raise the awareness. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Clay. Yeah. It's just, yeah. So I, I love how you had the Canadian jerseys up there, though. Yeah. And I got my, my Coyotes jerseys up there, too, if I lean to the side. That's my uh, that's my memento from my Make a Wish trip, which is kind of funny how you mentioned Make a Wish. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, I will definitely, well, actually, just to add, yeah. uh, just add your uh, Instagram handle for people to find you. So it's uh, the Paul on story. So the on is spelled A N. Uh, so that's once again is the Paul on story, and on is spelled. A-N. Yeah, and it's on, uh, you're on YouTube as well, so people can find you there as well. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate the time, though. Yeah, for sure, man. I'll, uh, I'll send an invite or a, a link out to you when it's uh, posted. All right, man. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun, man. It's been fun talking to you. And yeah, I think maybe I, I would do the same, too. Maybe next time I could interview you, you know? Yeah, it'd be cool, for sure. Uh, we'll keep in touch. All right, all right, Clay. I'll see you. I'll see you around, all right? Yeah, you too, Paul. Take it easy. All right, see you. Bye.